So you're finally going to figure out what's wrong with me. I don't know if that's possible in our lifetimes, but we will do our best. We're here to visit George Uncopolis, the chief scientist at Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. George believes new genetic discoveries are the key to developing new drugs. And as such, Regeneron has inked partnerships with Pennsylvania's Geisinger Health Systems and the UK Biobank, which are providing it with samples that come from hundreds of thousands of people. What we want to see, how does Regeneron sequence all that DNA? Most of your genetic information, it's like reading a book in a foreign language. You can't understand what's going on. This type of information that we're putting together with our partners is going to make your genetic code valuable. Valuable to the point that we will now be able to tailor medical care and preventive treatments just for you. If you just start with simple stuff, the breast and ovarian cancer genes, the genes for bad cholesterol and heart attacks, about 4% of the population has one of these findings where those patients need to know because they're really at risk of cancer or sudden death. And you can do something about that. You can give them cheap and very effective medicines to lower their cholesterol. You can counsel them and think about procedures in terms of you know, breast and ovarian cancer risk. And they have hundreds of stories and soon to be thousands of stories where they have found these mutations, gone back to those patients and their families, and in many cases, saved their lives. Where it really starts is, it starts with our partners, either the Geisinger Health System or the UK Biobank, which give us the samples from these hundreds of thousands of patients or volunteers. And let's say we want to do an experiment. Let's say we want to see all the people from Brooklyn who have blue eyes and reddish hair, whether they have a certain gene in common. You want to know whether those people also wear red glasses. Right? We want to know, exactly. So we want to know if there's a gene mutation that's responsible for all this. John can literally program a computer and say, give me all the people who have all these characteristics. And the biobank and the computerized system will actually select out of the millions of samples we have, every person that has the red hair and the blue eyes and whatever disease that we want. Pools them and they all come up here to be processed to get ready for sequencing. Biobank tracks everything by barcodes. So everything has a barcode on it. It scans it. Like George said, you can just type in the barcode. It's like a giant sample vending machine. It just goes in, grabs a sample, brings it out to you. Then we can bring it upstairs to process it. And so this white guy who's behind me. This is a KUKA arm. KUKA. What, so what is, what is KUKA exactly doing here? I see well plates moving from one place to another with amazing speed that I could never imagine a human technician doing. We want to get through these projects really, really fast. We want to do it at an incredibly large scale. So we built this robot. It can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Please. Traditionally, this would be a whole bunch of grad students. That is the point. Why are these guys able to do this with a system where they have, you know, 60 or so people sort of involved is because exactly as you said, this is untold numbers. I mean, it would take hundreds of technicians to try to process half a million samples a year. And another huge advantage is not only time and speed, but another key thing is these things don't make mistakes. You know, I remember the early days of DNA sequencing, 17 years ago, they were first doing the draft genomes. You'd have a whole football field, and that was for one person. I would still have to go about 13 billion years <laughs> to do what we're now doing in less than a year. It's incredible the rate of improvement in the capability of, of sequencing.